How's it going everybody? This is S3 Todd coming at you with the week 9 of college football prediction video. This video is going to be a little bit different because somebody had mentioned that I need the videos need to be shorter and they proposed that I should just do the top 10 games in my opinion of the week. So that is what I'm doing this week and if you look on your screen that's the new AP poll and BCS poll. I'm pretty sure you've saw it, seen it but if you haven't there it is. The games I'm doing for this week is Virginia at Miami. BYU at TCU, Michigan State at Nebraska, Baylor at Oklahoma State, Oklahoma at Kansas State, Georgia at Florida, Ole Miss at Auburn, Clemson at Georgia Tech, Stanford at USC, Wisconsin at Ohio State, and Wake Forest at North Carolina. We're going to go ahead and start out Virginia at Miami, which is the thir Thursday night primetime game. Last few weeks, the primetime games have kind of sucked, and this is kind of fitting the mold. Miami is 80th in passing yards in the country. Um, two, uh, the, I think it's 212 game, 63rd in rushing, 54th in points per game, and 31st in defense. So points per points per game for the defense. They come off that upset against Georgia Tech last week, and the week before that, they they put out the victory against North Carolina. Virginia has been hot and cold the points in this year. They lost to Southern Miss, but they upset Georgia Tech, who was undefeated going into that week. So they had their games. Um, it's going to be at Miami, which means there's going to probably be like five fans there. So um, I do believe Miami wins this game. I believe Miami will win 27-10 to 10 over Virginia. Moving on, the old rivalry game. Well, not necessarily old, but BYU at TCU. This game's on Friday night. The first time they played in a while with not without both teams being in the Mountain West this year, BYU is an independent team and TCU um, is still in the Mountain West, but next year they will be joining the Big 12, as I'm sure all of you have heard. TCU, their offense this year is one of the better in the country. They're eighth with, for uh, points per game on offense, but their defense has kind of been on the decline, losing a bunch of players last year. They're 35th in the nation on defense with 21.9 points per game, and on uh, offense they have they're scoring 43 points per game. The rushing attack's been great, with 18th in the country in rushing yards with 217 yards per game. All right through the passing game, 56 in the country with 234 yards per game. They're coming off a huge victory against New Mexico, is one of the worst teams in the country. They won 69 to nothing. And I'm pretty sure y'all, all you guys know, probably got the name RG3 the first week of the season when they lost to Baylor on that Friday night. They lost 50 to 48 in the triple overtime, I think, or double overtime. They don't really have any significant wins this year. Their probably biggest win is against San Diego State. Now it's kind of close, 27 to 14. They also lost to SMU in overtime, 40 to 13. So they're they're five six points away from being an undefeated team as of right now, but they at they're sitting at. Uh, five and two right now. BYU right now is six and two. They have a lot. They have losses against Utah and Texas. They came really close to beating Texas. We're winning going to the fourth quarter, but lost. That was in week two. Um, they have a pretty big win. They beat UCF, which is kind of surprising to me. But UCF's been on the decline this year. People thought they were going to go undefeated, but they didn't. Uh, U Oregon State. They beat who's not that great, but they're still a Pac-12 team. They're all, they all across the board. Their their stats aren't great as a team. But they're sitting in six and two right now, bowl eligible. Their best stat is points per uh, game on the defensive side of the ball. They're thirty second in the country with tw allowing twenty one points per game. This game is going to be close. It's at TCU. They got the home field advantage, so I'm giving them the victory, but really close. I believe they'll beat BYU twenty twenty one to fourteen. Moving on, Michigan State at Nebraska. This game is in front of the Big Red. Um. Michigan State is coming off that miraculous miraculous Hail Mary victory against Russell Wilson in Wisconsin last week. Michigan State's only loss this year is against Notre Dame, and that's kind of surprising me because Notre Dame's not near as – they're overrated like always, but they had a pretty good win against Michigan State. Michigan State has the seventh best defense in the country, only allowing 13 points per game. The Russian attack isn't what it used to be. They're 77th in the country right now, 43rd in passing yards with Kirk Cousin at quarterback. Like I said, they're they're in a brutal four-game schedule right now. They've won all three right now. This is me the fourth game under that brutal four-game schedule. They played Ohio State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nebraska. Won all of those games. Well, this will be the fourth game in one of the previous three. It's going to be a tough game, especially being at Bo Pelini in Nebraska. 
Nebraska, their only loss this year is against Wisconsin, who Michigan State, as I said, just beat. And it was a really, it was a big blowout. They lost 48-17 to against Wisconsin. They're coming off two wins uh, against Minnesota and Ohio State. Um, they have one loss this year. Like I said, they're 6-1. and one, They're 14th in the country. Their offense is playing great. Taylor Martinez uh, can run like the wind, but he's like kind of similar to Denard Robinson, but he's not as bad as a passer, but he's kind of like Denard. They're 103rd in passing yards, but their rushing attack is one of the best in the country. They're 7th in the country in rushing with 261 yards per game. They're 20th in the country in points per game with 37. Their defense is, like I said, it's been on the decline. Bo Pelini's known for his defense, but it's not. The, the black shirts isn't there this year. They're 54th in the country right now, 25.3. I mean, it's not that bad, but not what you expect out of Bo Pelini and his black shirts. Um, I do believe Michigan State will win this game kind of close. I say they'll beat Nebraska 31-24. to Next game, a real interesting game. Baylor at Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State right now is number third in the country. They control their destiny. If they went out, they probably can go to the national championship game. But they have a they have tough tests coming up like this game. This could be a maybe a trap game, I guess you could say. They're coming off wins against Missouri and Texas and Texas A&M. The Texas A&M game was probably their closest of the year so far. They had to come 14 down, I believe, and they came back and they won 30 to 29. They beat Texas pretty comfortably, 38 to 26. And they're coming off a big blowout win last week that people didn't think they were going to do so against James Franklin in Missouri, 45-24. to And now this week, you have Baylor, who is led by Robert Griffin. They have a terrible defense, but doesn't go well for them because Oklahoma State can... They're second in the country in points per game with 48. They're second in the country in passing yards with 387. Their rushing attack's okay, going 56 in the country, 161 points per game. And their defense is about par for the Big 12, 65th in the country with 27 points per game on the defensive side of the ball. This game's on ABC, 2.30 game. I believe Baylor could put up some points, but I don't think they'll hang. I think their defense... I What it comes down to, I think Oklahoma State's defense will stop Baylor's, de Baylor's offense more than Baylor's defense will stop Oklahoma State's offense. Like I said, this is going to be a really high-scoring game. Baylor's themselves is six in the country with 40, 44 games, I think, and 44 points per game. They're seventh in passing with Robert Griffin, 340 yards per game, seventh in the country. They're 21st in rushing, 208 yards per game in the Russian. Um, Russian. And, but where their problem lies is they're 101st in the country with 32 points per game given up. If they want to win, the defense is going to have to play, and I just don't think they'll show up. I think Oklahoma State will score more. I believe they will win 48-34 to over Robert Griffin and Baylor. They'll keep it close in the start of the second half, but they'll pull out with the victory. Oklahoma State will. And after this, they have Kansas, which should – well, not Kansas. They have um, – sorry about that. They have Kansas State, and they have Oklahoma – well, actually, they have Kansas State, then Texas Tech, then they have a, what could be a trap game against Ohio State, then Oklahoma. If they win those games, which is a tough test, they'll be going right to the national championship game. Next game, we have Oklahoma at Kansas State. I'm not going to talk too much about this game. Other than, I'm not going to get into the statistics, but... I believe this is gonna be a really, really close game. Kansas State is one of the best coach, one of the best coach teams in the country. Bill Snyder came back. He's like 95 years old, but who cares? He's a great, great coach. Kansas State's one of those Cinderella teams. They're, they're, one of the lesser talented teams in the Big 12, but they're coached, like I said, to where they do everything they have to right to win the game. They control the time of possession. They play great special teams. Their defense plays great. They just do everything they need to to win. And it's, they're proving to do so right now. This game is at Kansas State, which is a pretty good environment. This game should have been where College Game Day went this week. But for some reason, they decided to go to USC and Stanford. So that kind of made me a little bit sad. Kind of, um, don't know why, but that's what they did. Kansas State has that great rushing attack, and Oklahoma's coming off that 
that lost last week against Texas Tech, which was a big upset. Kansas State right now, they're kind of average across the board. 19th in the country rushing yards, 34th where points scored, 23rd in defense. They don't pass the ball that much. They have 110, they're 110th in the country with 140 yards per game. They like to run the ball, like I said. Oklahoma, they're coming off that loss against Texas Tech. Oklahoma has a great passing, passing attack with Landry Jones at quarterback and Ron Bros on the outside. They're fourth in the country in passing yards. They're seventh in uh, total offense. And they're 22nd in defense. I think this game's going to be close, but it's going to come down to uh, Bill Snyder and the way he can coach. If Kansas State can control the time of possession, they will win this game very, very close. Oklahoma is way more talented than Kansas State, but Kansas State has been proven to be the best coach team in the country. I believe they win 28-27 to over Oklahoma. Next game, Georgia at Florida. Georgia's coming off that victory last week against against Vanderbilt. Actually, it was two weeks ago. They had the bye week and so did Florida. The key for Florida is John Brantley's health. If he can be healthy, they have a chance to win. But I've gone really far in this video in like 11 minutes, so I'm going to start making my prediction. The rest of my prediction is really short. The whole point of this video is to make it shorter, and I made it longer. So... I believe Georgia is going to beat Florida 21-17. Ole Miss at Auburn believes this is going to be an upset. Auburn was coming off that loss last week, that big loss against LSU. They're going to be a little bit down. And Ole Miss is coming off that close to victory against LSU. I mean, not LSU, um, Arkansas. Sorry about that. And I think they're going to gain a little bit of confidence, and I think they'll kind of surprise Auburn and beat them 20-17. Roll Tide. Clemson, Georgia Tech, this is going to be a close game. Kind of like a trap game for Clemson. Georgia Tech's going to play them tough, even though they came off that loss last week against Miami. I believe Clemson's going to win 41-34 in that game. Stanford to USC, don't know why this game's a game day. Uh, some people think USC's going to give Stanford some problems, but I don't think there will be a problem. Stanford, the rushing attack, and Andrew Luck will be too much for USC. I believe they'll win 44-20. Wisconsin at Ohio State. Wisconsin's coming off that loss. Last week against Michigan State, they're going to be really down because they were undefeated, had chances at a national championship, and a Hail Mary destroyed those chances. And their first chance in a national championship in a really long time. And the main reason because of that is Russell Wilson, and he's going to be not going to be there after this year. So that's kind of depressing for the Wisconsin fans. But they can still win the Big Ten over the Rose Bowl. I don't think they should have a problem this game. I believe Wisconsin will beat Ohio State 28-14. to Wake Forest at North Carolina. This is my upset prediction of the week. Wake Forest has been some surprising people this, this year. They have that upset victory over Florida State. They played Virginia Tech pretty tough going into the fourth quarter. They kind of let it get out of hand. I think they're going to Chapel Hill and surprise North Carolina. North Carolina's coming off a loss. I believe Wake Forest will win 28-21 to over North Carolina. That is it, guys. Sorry I made this video kind of long. I'm going to be making a LSU Alabama trash-talking video coming up soon. Um, I'm going to that game. Roll Tide. I will see you guys later. And, yeah, Roll Tide.